The Kleisen condensation is a remarkable reaction. Take a look at this. When the simple ester is treated with base, a significantly more complex product results. This product has twice as many carbons. It has two carbonyl groups. So there's a host of things that can be done with this compound. We've made a bigger molecule from a smaller one by making a carbon-carbon bond. Here's another example. This is ethyl phenyl acetate. It has a phenyl group attached to a CH2. When it's treated with base, this compound results. Again, it's a beta keto ester. We call it a beta keto ester because the compound next to the carbonyl group is an alpha carbon, and the next one along the chain is beta. When you take a look at these two reactions, you see that the starting materials have a couple things in common. They have the carboethoxy group carbon and one other. This is a CH2. So both products have these portions of the molecule in common. You see there are four carbons plus substituents attached. The two and four carbons have the same things attached. This ester has three carbons of an alkyl group attached to the CH2. And here they are in the product, once and again. This n-propyl group is attached at the 2-carbon and the 4-carbon. And below, there's a phenyl group in the starting material. And there are two phenyl groups in the product, one at the 2-carbon and one at the 4. So generalizing from this, we can say that the Kleisen condensation is a reaction of esters, where we have a carboethoxy group and a CH2, plus something else attached in the starting material. And in the product, we have four carbons. And at the two carbon and four carbon, we have the same substituent attached. And the ketone is at the beta position relative to the ester. Let's take a look at what accounts for this remarkable transformation. When this ester is treated with base, one of the protons alpha to the carbonyl is removed. This makes an enolate. An enolate can act as a nucleophile, so it can add to the carbonyl of another molecule of ester. This is like the aldol condensation. And like the aldol, this is a step that joins two small molecules together to make a bigger one. I put the new carbon-carbon bond in tan. And now look what we've done. We've added a nucleophile to a carboxylic acid derivative. That sounds like the first step of nucleophilic acyl substitution, doesn't it? Which might bring to mind what happens next. This pair of electrons can regenerate the carbonyl group, and the ethoxide leaves. So the Kleisen condensation pulls together two mechanistic principles we've seen before. The aldol condensation, where the enolate adds to the carbonyl of another molecule, and nucleophilic acyl substitution of carboxylic acid derivatives. So these are the principles. Let's take a look at the mechanistic details. This whole thing is started off by ethoxide as a base, removing the alpha proton. This makes an enolate, which is resonance stabilized. And this resonance stabilization accounts for the reason that the alpha proton is so acidic. Once this enolate has been formed, it can act as a nucleophile reacting with another molecule of ester. We visualize this pair of electrons adding to the carbonyl. Pi bond breaks. Carbon-carbon bond is formed. Here I've shown it in tan again. Notice that I'm writing equilibrium arrows. This reaction can go in both ways. I'm going to mention more about that in a minute. And then in the next step, this pair of electrons can reform the pi bond, kicking out the ethoxide. So this is the true catalyst, isn't it, to this point? Ethoxide is used in the first step and regenerated in the second step. But this reaction actually consumes base for a very important reason. This proton is alpha to two carbonyl groups and is especially acidic. So in the presence of base, this proton is removed completely. And we know that this enolate has three resonance structures. I've shown one here with a negative charge on the carbon, but there are two other resonance structures with negative charges on the oxygen. In any case, it's completely formed which removes the product from the equilibrium. And that's a good thing because it turns out this equilibrium favors starting material, not product. And without removal of that hydrogen, you get very low yields of the beta keto ester. When that hydrogen is removed, it shifts the equilibrium to product. And this is the initial product that's formed here. 
This enolate, when the reaction is completely done, in a final step, acid is added, this carbon is reprotonated, and then ultimately we make the beta ketoester itself. So we have enolate formation, it adds the carbonyl to make a new carbon-carbon bond. That intermediate behaves like the intermediate in nucleophilic acyl substitution and loses its oxide. The initial beta ketoester promptly loses a proton to move the equilibrium to product. And at the end, we add acid to get the product we want. What remains is for me to show you how to use this in synthesis. The Kleisen is suited to making beta ketoesters when the substitution on the two and the four carbons is identical. This will be the new carbon-carbon bond. Two molecules of the same thing react with each other. So we write this ester and we're done. Often we'd write the ester like this. I like to write it this way so you can't make a mistake about the compound you need. The bonds in this molecule are arranged exactly like they're going to be in product. And just to be fully clear, it's perfectly okay to write it exactly like this. So we know that CH2 is there. One of these hydrogens will be removed in the first step to make the enolate. And the other hydrogen has to be there in the product, so it can be removed to shift the equilibrium to product. This Kleisen condensation is very powerful because it makes a more complicated, larger molecule from a small one. The esters are usually readily available. At the same time, you see that you have to have identical substitution on carbons 2 and 4. In another video, I'm going to talk about cross Kleisen condensations where the substituents don't have to be the same. And finally, the Kleisen condensation derives a lot of its power from the fact that you can use this to make rings. And in another video, I'll talk about the intramolecular Kleisen condensation that makes rings.